Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The debate in this country over granting autonomy to the CBI has been on for some time now. However, the government was propelled into drafting a definite roadmap for granting the autonomy after the Supreme Court specifically asked for it. The Apex Court's direction came during the hearing on the coal allocation scam case when it dubbed the CBI as a parrot in the cage. It may be recalled here that Ashwini Kumar, the former law minister, lost his job after he had summoned the CBI officials to check the draft of the affidavit they were filing before the Supreme Court in the coal case. In fact, it was this revelation which led to the Supreme Court asking the centre about autonomy to the CBI. The centre, which acted swiftly by appointing a GOM headed by Finance Minister P. Chidambaram, submitted its proposal through an affidavit on Wednesday. The centre's proposal to grant functional autonomy includes a collegium to appoint the director, an accountability commission, granting financial powers to the CBI director equivalent to that of the director general of the CRPF, among others. The question is whether these proposals of the centre will satisfy those who, who have been demanding more autonomy to the CBI. More importantly, how will the Supreme Court react to these proposals when it takes up the matter on July 10th? Today, we will discuss the centre's proposals and see if the caged parrot can be freed if these proposals are brought into force. To discuss this, I have with me P.C. Sharma, former director of the CBI, Sudhir Kumar, former Vigilance Commissioner, Central Vigilance Commission, Vikas Singh, former Additional Solicitor General of India, and Vinay Kumar, Senior Assistant Editor, The Hindu. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Sharma, I'll come to you first. You think these proposals will uncage the parrot? Well, it is <laughs> unfortunate that today we have come to such a pass that the very ability of the CBI to do investigations independently right. and without pressure is being discussed. Having spent a lifetime in the CBI, I feel very sad. Nevertheless, over a period of time, certain things have happened we do, which do compel that something more should be done to strengthen the CBI. After going you're, through... You, you, you know, you're using the word strengthen. Yeah. Very I'm using the word st strengthen quite consciously. It has to be strengthened. Strengthened in, 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 in the sense that CBI should have unhindered powers to investigate cases and prosecute them. Prosecute, when I say prosecute them, they should be able to decide whether a case should be charge sheeted or it should not be charge sheeted. Right. That power should rest with the CBI. And if that has been deliberated by the government, it is good. If it has not been deliberated, then something is wanting still. Okay, that is very interesting. Which you, I want, I, I will get uh, Mr. Vikas Singh on this. Mr. Vikas, okay, I think uh, Mr. Vikas Singh is still not uh, available. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, you know, he has raised one very fundamental thing. Prosecute or not prosecute, it should be the option should be with the CBI and nobody else. We, when you say, I, 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 I suppose when you say nobody else, the government or any, should not so, be. Yeah, why? I'm, I'm saying again, saying very consciously, I'm quite conscious of what I've said. And I would like to intervene here by saying this thing, that criminal procedure court, which is a kind of Bible for investigations, does not allow anybody else to decide as to whether a case should be prosecuted or not. It gives powers only to the SHO of a police station, which in other terms, all investigating officers are SHOs. Right. They but have they, to decide. And they have to file a Then report. why are you saying that if, the, if, the, if those powers are already existing, why are you saying that the, those powers need to be given to the CBI? No, no you, those you mean powers, to say that no, those powers those are powers are already there. When, I didn't say this. I am saying this. CBI needs to be strengthened. Strengthened right. in terms that there should not be any encroachment on the you powers You agree that there are a lot of... You agree that there are encroachments. You agree with the Supreme Court uh, observation that it's a case, CBI is a caged parrot? Uh, well, I, I would not like to comment on the <laughs> observation made by the Honorable Supreme Court, but I would like certainly to say, which I have written in an article also, that as far as the statutory powers are concerned, statutory provisions is concerned, they are there to enable CBI to do investigations unhindered. But still, 
with the change of time, with the passage of time, circumstances change, people do come and intervene in the CBI investigation. How to insulate them? It's the, now probably the thrust of the whole argument, the debate that is going on in the country, how to insulate Absolutely. CBI. Absolutely. And there's no emphasis how to prevent others from in influencing CBI. The, I suppose that goes together. In, in, you know, insulating them means other, others don't infringe on them. But uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, you have gone through some of the proposals which the government has placed before the Supreme Court in its affidavit. One of the things which it says is that, you know, the appointing the uh, appointment of the director will now be done by a collegium of the Prime Minister, the Leader of Opposition and the Supreme Court Chief Justice. You think this, is, this, is, this will adequately deal with some of the criticisms earlier about, about the appointment of the director? One of the uh, issues, of course, which is involved in this, uh, I mean in the whole process, is also the process of selection of the chief. Right. And there, I don't think there would be uh, much reason to complain about the procedure or the, the collegium which has been uh, constituted. Which, which has, has been, been proposed. proposed. Which has been proposed. Right. Yes, I, I think this is more or less in line with various other uh, right. appoint, statutory appointments uh, in, the, in the government. Right. And uh, the CBC is appointed in similar manner. CBC is, uh, is a, a smaller body. Yes. This is actually more uh, in line with uh, the Information Commission. Information Commission. Information Commission. This and is, CEC also. And, uh, and the C. I don't yes. know. Yes, CEC the also. CEC I think. also. Yes. Uh, probably the NHRC. Uh, NHRC is altogether different. Is the, okay. But, but th this. Uh, uh, along with this, I think there should be also an issue of the tenure because if you are likely to, uh, if you are going to uh, pick up a candidate from a wider pool, right. then there would be a question of, I mean, it would be uh, in all fairness to give a, a longer tenure because two years is too short a period. Two years, you think, somebody, is, is a short uh, period. Yeah, I would to, like to support this argument. You see, anybody because you know the 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 wording of the in, uh, about this is very clear. It says that minimum two years. It doesn't yeah. say that you know it is two years. Yeah. No, I, if it is minimum two years, and that means it could be more. It could be more. No, it could be more. That has to be decided. It it should be precisely. It should be precisely out. put in the act. Okay. Uh, of course, that may not have been suggested here, indicated because you see, then you if you are going to pick the director from the Indian police service, then it would be influenced by the the six uh, the superannuation, superannuation issues. Yes. Uh, right now, the tenure is two years, even if it goes beyond six beyond years. years. So there would be various adjustments that would be called for. But uh, I would like to also comment on what Mr. Sharma yes, said yes, please. Ab about uh, insulating the CBI. Insulating the CBI. You see. As Mr. Sharma said, the Criminal Procedure Code does uh, uh, sort of mandate, uh, does provide that the SHO is the, the ultimate person, authority to ultimate decide. Ultimate authority to decide. But there is, I mean, the successive laws, and there is a provision for superintendents. Right. Now, at the district level, there is a superintendent of police. Now, he is, I mean, he is there to supervise. It is not, I mean, that means that he takes the responsibility for the, the absolute independence or objectivity that the SHO is exercising. So or is supposed to exercise. Is, yeah, is supposed. <laughs> but, and that very concept has been, in fact, carried forward following Vineet Narayan judgment. judgment. And uh, uh, and the incorporation of this provision in the in CVC the, Act, where okay. a superintendent has been provided with vis-a-vis -vis CBI. But you see, is that effective? Has that been able to deliver? Has that been able to provide the the um, uh, insulation uh, that the Supreme Court had visualized or suggested in Vineet Narayan judgment? I think that is an issue. Uh, which is still wide open. Okay. And because it is wide open, that is why today, again, 
uh, there is a discussion and the Supreme Court is trying to, uh, to take, uh, uh, take a stock of the situation as to how much forward movement has occurred since Vineet Narayan judgment right. or the directives or the ruling given in that case. Absolutely. Let me get Mr. Vikas Singh in on this. Mr. Vikas Singh, do you think that these proposals made by the government in the affidavit before the Supreme Court will insulate the CBI from extraneous influence as the Supreme Court mentioned in it, you know, while, while asking for this kind of affidavit? Do you think all these proposals made will insulate the CBI from extraneous influences? I think these are basically half measures. Of course, these are some steps in the right direction, but these are half measures because, you know, firstly, uh, it's a welcome step that they are giving the appointment to a collegium which is of, you know, consisting the Chief Justice of India, the leader of opposition and the Prime Ministers. Obviously, nobody has uh, the majority. The, the government doesn't have a majority in the decision-making process. Right. And this definitely brings in a lot of objectivity in the appointment of the Director of CBI. Right. But it is not, that is not enough. You know, if you ask me, if the Director of the CBI is again to be given a post-retirement gover governor's job, or, or if, if there are things, you know, which can be dangled on him, then uh, what kind of independence do you expect out of the Director? So there should be some two-year, you know, some kind of a two-year moratorium that he will not take any government assignment. Okay. Then even the cadre within the CBI, who, who, will be, who will be posted there if IPS officers are going there on deputation, who are ultimately under the control of the government, there, they are under the All, All India uh, Service rules. Right. So those kind of control are there working in, in a very, very, uh, I would say, subtle manner. So all that will have to be looked into. It's not only just the director CBI which is enough. It will have to be the entire functioning of the CBI which will have to be made completely independent. And people who work there will be having the not only the director but the others also who work there also will have some kind of a protection. Okay, the, so you, you, you can so think you of think some that kind of financial autonomy also. Financial autonomy, so, they, have, they have spoken about, they have said that it will be equivalent to that of the director of the CRPF. You think that is not enough? No, I am, I am, to be honest, I have not seen the entire affidavit, so I have not, I am not, okay. I have just saw the affidavit with regard to the appointment okay, okay. of the director. I'll, I'll come so back to you. there is anything, if, you, if there is anything specific you want my opinion on, you can, yeah. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Sharma, this equivalent to that of the director of CRP, no, the, one, director one general does not of CRPF. know what are exactly what their financial that? powers, ah. but I feel, and I say it very frankly. And why do, why does the, why, why does the CBI director need to have more financial powers? No, uh, maybe I might raise a controversial Please do. point. But as far as my experience goes, financial autonomy, financial power was never a problem. Was never an issue. Never an issue. What is problem is, is functional autonomy. Right. Functional autonomy means that you should be able to register cases which are prima facie, which disclose prima facie corruption. Right. You should be able to investigate them unhindered. Right. And you should be able to prosecute them based on sound prosecutable evidence. This is the thrust of... Absolutely. The, uh, I will, I'll, I'll, let me get Vinay Kumar in on this. Vinay, Vinay you yes. heard Mr. Sharma. You know, it's very interesting. He says that financial autonomy has never been an issue. But the other points which he raised, which just now, you think these proposals before the Supreme Court, you know, ensures those, what, what Mr. Sharma is talking about? You know, the, in case of CBI, it has always been, if you uh, look from 1997 uh, Vinay to... Vinay Narayan, Vinit Narayan. Uh, post Vinit Narayan? Yeah, post Vinit Narayan situation, if you see, it has been a long debate and certainly Supreme Court was not happy and satisfied the way the government has gone about implementing uh, essence of that judgment. Right. It has done, you know, uh, two year fixed tenure uh, for the director and a selection panel for the director and uh, superintendents uh, over uh, CBI CBC. in anti-corruption cases, only in uh, cases under prevention of corruption act to CBC. Right. Other cases, you this, know, this, if you see, if no, you this, see this, Girish, interestingly, uh, Vinay, in this affidavit yeah. also the same thing is repeated that yeah, only yeah. the corruption prevention of corruption act will be overseen uh -huh. by the CBC and others by the government. Others by others by the government because no government wants to let go control over the 
its premier investigation agency like the CBI, right. which is at the disposal of the government. And this is what has invoked wrath of Supreme Court. Absolutely. That when Supreme Court was monitoring a particular probe, in, in Colgate, uh, let's say, scam. Right. How come the law minister of the country um, sees the progress report, the status report, and uh, tries to the, interfere in it, right. tries to, you know, modify it or put words here and there? Right. This is what, you know, the CBI's um, dilemma has been that it has gone weak in certain uh, cases on which are politically sensitive. And that is what has invoked wrath of uh, the various high courts and the Supreme Court. Right. But it is not that everything is rotten with the CBI and you know the, it's investig some of the best investigators and some of the seasoned investigators are with the CBI. Uh, you can see how Ishrat Jahan case uh, yes. is being investigated, how ISRO uh, espionage case way back in 1996 was busted uh, by the CBI and um, this in Orissa, Australian um, uh, missionaries, yes. uh, Philip Stain murder case was yes. investigated by CBI. So there are a lot, lot of cases which have been uh, done by CBI in a very uh, meticulous manner and the conviction rate is also very high. It's not that, you know, what Mr. Sharma says, I entirely agree with it, that it needs functional autonomy. But it has to, it has to get uh, what Supreme Court said, liberating it from extraneous external influences. Yes. That is what the gist of Supreme Court's Absolutely. order is. And you know, all eyes are now on July 10 when Supreme Court will take cognizance of this affidavit and uh, will hear what the government has proposed. Okay. You know, accountability commission is good, yeah, exactly. but we don't know how, no, how far it will be workable. No, Vinay, exactly. I'll, I'm coming to that, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, and I want both you you and Mr. Sharma to address this. Accountability Commission, is this something a viable proposal at all? Having yeah. three retired Supreme Court or High Court judges, and they will oversee the thing, you know? Uh, is this something, and what happens to the CVC in, in this case? Is there... Yeah. A, you know, isn't that no, there's another some body? Then the question of uh, appointment of accountability commission would also uh, come under the scanner. Yes. And uh, you see, and then this would get into a conflict, or there would be some overlap with the CVC's role too. Right. Uh, I mean, based on my experience, you see, I have felt that uh, the uh, CVC. Uh, was a good beginning, the CVC Act, but it needed a review much uh, quite some time back uh, whether the provisions had uh, um, delivered. Right. And uh, there, were, there was a scope to improve. Uh, if uh, e even, I mean, I'm digressing a little, but I believe that even the Lokpal concept could be superimposed on the CVC uh, institution no, in and fact, by I, enlarging it, I'm, I'm, by, by even putting uh, the, uh, introducing the provision for appointment of the CVC mem uh, chairman and the members and, and the enlarged body uh, through, uh, uh, to, uh, and authorizing it to a collegium like this. We will, we will, so we will. You, you insulate I'll, that. I'll come to that. Yeah, Mr. Sharma. Yeah. You see, I, I find it a very vague. This accountability comes. Accountability. Firstly, is accountability another layer of supervisionary, supervisory body or superintendence? If that is so, it is Or does it replace something? Uh, or does it replace or displace somebody? Yes. It is not required. See, whether it is CVC or it is the proposed accountability commission, None of these two can guide the investigations. They do not have the power and perhaps the law will not give them those powers to direct CBI to do the investigation in a particular manner. Right. They cannot do that. Right. You can certainly find fault with them, the why this case is pending for so many years, why you have not done this, why you have not done this. Here the question is, which I think has not been adequately addressed, how to improve the quality of investigation. Number two, how to enable CBI to take on small man or big man where corruption is involved and do the investigations 
without hindrance, without fear. No, that, is, that, is, that issue is not no, addressed let, That's why let us get uh, Mr. Vikas Singh on this. Mr. Vikas Singh, this whole concept of the Accountability Commission, what is your view on this? Is this something which will, which as Mr. Sharma was raising uh, the issue, is it something which is going to replace or displace some, uh, some other uh, mechanism or is it an additional mechanism? Well, I also feel that this accountability commission, really speaking, is, is no, no um, um, legal way of uh, controlling what the CBI is to do. I'll tell you why. Firstly, the, the, um, um, the fact you should also appreciate that judges are also, after all, human beings. Right. And there are very few judges, like in every profession, there are very few judges who can be said to be giants in their profession. Otherwise, the rest of them are also the same, amenable to same kind of... Like, you know, we have seen a successful law minister is one who ensures that if a judge is doing some, some uh, tricky case or some case which can embarrass the government to ensure that he is given some commission <laughs> before he retires so that he, he, you know, sort of helps the government. So you find all kinds of judges also who will be pliable. So the, so f the concept of bringing three judges simpliciter retired, will not achieve anything retired judges. from that perspective also. Yeah. Secondly, in law, in law, a investigating officer has to apply his independent mind as to what are the evidences that he has to look at and what are the evidences that he may ignore. Right. If he is actually taking a call that these are the lines that I need to take, if his quality is bad, if he is not taking a call either for some extraneous reason or he doesn't have the capacity to take that correct call, that needs improvement. You need to bring in better people there both in terms of integrity and also in terms of their ability to look at, I know of a lot of police officers who do a fantastic amount of um, um, uh, research and, and, and the kind of investigative work they do and the way they follow a lead and they are able to get to the culprit. You know, sometimes culprit are uh, uh, far and wide away right. and they're able to tap him, etc. So it all depends on the quality of the investigation. Absolutely. And that will depend on these two things, that yeah. the better, the, the correct person, both both merit-wise and also integrity-wise. Absolutely. Mr. That's the way to do it. These okay. judges will not be able to bring in this, okay, this, this three. Vinay, Vinay, coming, coming back to you, on this whole accountability commission issue, I am myself a little confused. Is this accountability commission there, you know, the proposal is to oversee the investigations or as I have read somewhere, it is, it is supposed to look after the, uh, you know, about the complaints against the employees and the officers of the CBI. You know, is it, what, is, what, is the, what, what is the proposal? I mean, um, as far as uh, affidavit before uh, Supreme Court is concerned, it gives uh, two, three areas, uh, you know, the, what I think the government has in mind to make CBI accountable, you know, the, when it is giving uh, more powers and autonomy, which I think uh, will be a classic case of two steps forward and one, one backward. Step. And uh, this accountability commission of three judges. Right. I, I don't know. You know CBI you know, is any investigation and investigating agency is accountable to the court. You know, I, they uh, submit yeah, their yes, investigations yes, I, to I, the I, court. No, no. But that's why uh, that's why I'm a little. There confused. is always judicial it's accountability. It's, it's, no, Mr. I, Mr. 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 Sharma. In fact, it says commission to entertain and inquire into allegations of no, misbehavior, no, no. incapacity, impropriety, Le or irregularity on the part of the this. officer or an employee of the CBI. Either on this, a complaint this, or on a this part center. of this part of the so is it is it there to you know oversee the the way the you know complaints against the I do not the know what the what CBI the government means by employees. it. But what I want to say is this: this accountability commission. What does it mean? Will CBI be accountable to these three judges? Accountability in democracy is to the parliament. Yes, there should be a system by which CBI should become more and more accountable to the parliament. But if accountability commission, if it is being envisaged as a body which will guide the investigation, which is wrong, then they there cannot is a, guide the investigation. There is a serious problem. We are completely running no, out of time. Mr. Sudhir Kumar, no, I want you to address the last issue. Mm. The whole, in the, during the entire Lokpal debate, and uh, we have the Lokpal bill, and you know it has been passed in one house, and all yeah. this has happened. Yeah. How is that and this... Is this going to infringe on, on some of the some of the powers of the Lokpal there? You, let, assuming that the Lokpal will become a reality, I, how I, will this? I don't think 
एक लोकपाल एलिमेंट हैज बीन इनकॉर्पोरेटेड और ब्रॉट इन हियर यस सो देयर देयर इज बाउंड टू बी सम कंफ्यूजन सो देयर इज गोइंग टू बी अ लॉट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन ओवर दिस आई एम लेट स्मॉल वन स्मॉल यस वेरी क्विकली सर दी वेरी क्विकली यस दिस दैट देयर शुड बी अ अकाउंटेबिलिटी कमीशन टू लुक इनटू कंप्लेंट्स एंड अदर साइड काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दिस इज नॉट नेसेसरी सीबीसी इज कॉम्पिटेंट टू लुक इनटू ऑल दीस थिंग्स इवन टुडे मिस्टर मिस्टर विकास सिंह लास्ट वर्ड्स टू यू वेरी क्विकली no i just wanted to say one thing somebody just mentioned that the uh, cbi is accountable to the parliament yeah. i i think that's a wrong statement yeah. to make cbi <laughs> the investigation is accountable to the court yes. where they will ultimately submit their report Absolutely. so in that sense the functionally accountability so, I, I, I towards the court and not i did not mean that cbi is accountability whether regarding its functions as far as the investigations is concerned i agree I like, sir, that I mean, cbi I is accountable only to the court absolutely but you know it anyway is. we are completely sorry we are completely that's, run that's out of time i wanted to only correct this okay we are completely run out of time but the fact of the matter is this whole proposal we will wait for the, how the supreme court will react to it and what kind of a reaction and how they will look at uh, at this proposal which the center has proposed so we will wait for it the july 10th is the uh, hearing where the supreme court will take up this matter until then we'll wait and watch thanks to all my guests mr pc sharma mr sudhir kumar mr vikas singh and vinay kumar please keep watching we'll come back with another issue in the big picture on monday meanwhile have a great weekend <laughs>